Hey guys, it's Robin, RSL and Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. On one of my Whip It Wednesdays, I showed this pepper pouch that I made. Now you have to excuse it, it's, it's already wrapped up. It's going to be sent as a gift to a friend of mine. I don't want to open it all back up again because I've already got it, no cat fur or anything on it, so it's ready to go. I did this as a quilt as you go pouch. It's just a simple zipper pouch. And I did have a couple requests to show how I made it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that today. If you know the basics of how to make a pouch, and we've made several pouches in the past and recently actually, it's just a little bit of knowing how it was all put together. And once you see it, it's, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I look at a project, I'm like, wow, right? And then they show a video on how to do it. I'm like, oh, well, that was so simple. I should have known that. This is the type of pouch that I enjoy because it's something that I can just play with. I can pull out some fabrics, pick out a zipper and some batting and stuff and just go crazy and make it any way I want. So this was one of the ones where I just happened to have some of these little bits of pepper fabric. I thought they all went together nicely and this green fabric went good with the green zipper. So I decided to just build as I go and this is what I ended up with. So I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step so you can make a pouch similar to this or change it up a little bit and make it in the way that you would like. I had a bag, a Ziploc bag, marked Batik Scraps, that the lady that I do the bartering, I'll knit, she sends me fabric and stuff. She knew I love Batiks, and that's what we started trading back and forth. So she sent me this random bag of Batik Scraps. Now, I don't know what was being made with it. There's all different types of Batiks in here, and there's all different sizes and colors and shapes. This is the first time I opened it up just a few minutes ago, and I thought it was kind of fun because as I'm pulling them out, there is just however it was trimmed up. So we have this kind of a shape. We have this one where it was just trimmed around the design somewhere. So it's got all different, it's like a frame almost. And I think it's fun to just challenge yourself by having a random bag of scraps and then you just have to make something with it. You can't bring in any extras. You have to use what's in the bag. This was a gallon size bag. Yeah, it looks like a gallon size bag and it was just kind of not full to the brim, but it was nice and full. So there's plenty of batiks in here for me to choose from to make a bag. Now I did play a little bit before we got started today just to see what's in here and maybe give some a nice little press with the iron. I found this random one too. This one might even be fun as a starting point because it has all of these little parts already cut out on all four corners like that. It must have been some type of a flower design or something or just the way it was randomly cut out. But I would look at this and I would wanna go ahead and take this and use this as my base to start something. Maybe some type of an art quilt or a wall hanging and work off from that. But that's not what we're doing today. Today we're gonna to make a zipper pouch. I just wanna kinda of show you how I was going through my bag of scraps to decide how I'm gonna make it. So I'm gonna show you how I made the panels of the pouch. I've done enough videos that you guys can refer back to. I'll put a couple up in the iCard or you can just search on my channel here on YouTube for zipper pouch and any video that has to discuss with zippers and pouches and stuff is gonna pop up. I've also shown you different ways to do quilt as you go. I will walk you through it here, but it's almost the same as when we did the selvage bits, except instead of just sewing them one on top of the other, we're actually gonna do the right sides together and flip. But I have shown you how to do that earlier too, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. We won't be going right to the sewing machine. We're gonna do it all right here today. But I'm pretty sure just walking you through it, you're going to be able to understand it. Even if you're a new sewer or a new quilter, and this is the first time you're working on this type of project. I like to have all of my videos as much as possible, even if it's a complicated design, to have them beginner friendly so that anyone who wants to expand their knowledge and just try a little bit of a more difficult technique that they haven't done yet, that we can walk through it step by step. Because I know you guys who've been doing this for a long time could probably just see it and make it on your own. But it's nice to help all those new quilters and new sewers to work through it step by step. I am using cotton batting. I recommend cotton batting or some type of thing that you can easily put your iron to because we are going to press it and quilt as you go. If you want to use another batting that you're used to, you know how your batting acts and if you want need to put a presser cloth down on it or something. But since I'm using 100% cotton batting that I can put my iron down this on either side, either way, give it a good press in and it'll be good to go. Now I went ahead and I measured my pepper pouch and I've been finding that that's a 
about a nice size pouch to put a few different things in. It's not too long, it's not too tall. And for this type of project to show off the fabric that that's about the size I've been working with lately. You can make your pouch any size you want. You can make it square, you can make it narrow, you can make it taller. But for me, what I did is I cut my batting, I cut it eight inches wide and six inches tall. Once again, if you're working off of a zipper, get your zipper out and have your zipper be larger than your pouch. I'm definitely gonna put up the video about trimming zippers up there. So whatever I do for my zipper, I'm gonna go ahead and get at least a nine inch zipper. I know I have a bunch of them because I just placed that order. So for me making my pouch at eight by six, I know I have a zipper. So if you have only one zipper, figure out the length of your zipper and make your pouch just an inch or two smaller narrower based on the length of that zipper so you don't have to worry about anything on the zipper ends if you already know how to add the little tabs to the zipper and you're comfortable working with that then go with it that that's fine but for someone who's just learning this for the first time we're going to make our pouch narrower than the length of our zipper so they are eight by six now i'm going to take my scraps for my batik like i did with my peppers they're just going to go across the top here so I have to decide how much of a bottom piece I want and how tall I want my scraps. I decided that I'm gonna make my solid base on the bottom, that it's gonna be three inches high, and it's gonna be the width of whatever my batting is, which is eight inches. Now I've already marked my lines on this pouch, just cause I wanted to play with the fabrics to see what I have that's gonna fit in there. But I'll go ahead and show you how I marked it. Now we are cutting our base fabric at three inches, but I did mark my pouch at two and a half, just because I wanna make sure that if I go, as we're doing it, I'll show you where, but if I get a little bit off on my sewing, I can just trim that little extra off the bottom. So I just took my ruler and I laid the bottom of my batting at three inches. On the other side, I used a Sharpie, but on this side, I'm just gonna go ahead and use just a regular big pen. Cause you really don't wanna have Sharpie on your ruler. Now, sometimes if you have more of a, something with a little bit more ink to it, there we go, a little bit of a felt tip, sometimes that helps. But the cotton batting, you kind of got to get drawn and scrubbing on it a little bit. Now, whatever mark I put on that one, I'm going to put on the same one here. Did I put, I sure did. I put that at three inches and I wanted it two and a half because we were discussing the fabric. If I made my mark wrong, that is perfectly fine. My fabric is going to cover it up. If you want to use a marking tool that can be erased. I wouldn't use anything that's gonna go away with heat, like a friction pen, because we're gonna be pressing this with our iron all the time and it's gonna disappear and you're gonna to have to redraw it constantly. But having that extra on there, it does not, you're not gonna see, if you were using white fabric, like all white up top, you could see that line through it. But remember, batting has two sides. Just flip it over and use the other side. Or you can even turn it this way and mark your line there if you don't like where it was. We are not going to be using any white fabrics. Our batiks are pretty, batiks tend to be a little bit sturdier and not as see-through. And I'm not using any whites, so that's going to be fine. So I've marked them both at two and a half. Now, since this is one of those projects that I'm just playing with and having fun, I went through my scraps and I pulled out the different colors and deciding what I wanted. And I wanted to decide on the bottom fabric. So I did audition several of them with the scraps that I'm using for the top pieces. And I decided that I like this dark maroon burgundy red color. Now, one of the fun things about batiks is for the most part, a batik is very difficult to tell the front from the back because of the dyeing process and the resist and everything, it goes all the way through. Now there will be some where you can see, especially with the background colors, that if one side is more saturated than the other, that that tends to be the right side. And I can see with this side, that this one tends to have more saturation than the back just by a little, but it's really not gonna matter because both sides look good. Now in this package, there was this piece of fabric also. Now it does look batiki, right? But when you flip it over and you can see how the colors did not go all the way through. So this is not an actual batik fabric. And I, I don't mind that it's mixed in because I can pull it out and just put it with my regular scraps. It's no big deal. But that's the way you could tell a batik from the rest. It, the batiks are dyed all the way through and Regular fabric, like you find your regular quilting cotton tends to have a lighter side or a wrong side that's very obvious to tell.
Now for my scraps up top, I decided that I wanted to make them four inches. That would bring it just, see our line from the top is three and a half inches and the, from the bottom is two and a half because that gives us our six inches. So I wanted to have my scraps to be four inches. That way I have a little wiggle room. I will be lining them up right along this line here. So my extra is gonna stick off at the top. So as I'm quilting them and doing the quilt as you go, if something wiggles or squiggles, I'll be able to trim it nice and even up here. And down here, I want it to go just about on that line. It can go a little bit past, but as long as my stitching stays right about on there, it's gonna make it easy for us to go ahead and trim things up and lay this down and do all that stuff. I'll show you as we go. And since we are working with scraps here, my scraps, as I said, they're gonna be one and a half inches wide by four inches high. I could sit here and I could just kind of lay out and audition some of it and decides which ones I like and where I wanna place them. I can have both pouches be exact or I can have them different. Now I kind of alternated it up. I used, I cut two of each of the pepper fabric but I might have put it on the front side of the pouch, I might have put the jalapeno here, but on the back side, I might have put the jalapeno in the middle. So all the fabrics are gonna be the same. They're just gonna be mixed up so that each side looks different. And I think I will probably, I don't know, I have a lot of colors to choose from here. So I might just go ahead and cut enough out and mix and match and then just go from there. So for my pepper pouch, I used eight fabrics for each side of the pouch. So I need to cut eight one and a half by four inch strips for this pouch, and then eight one and a half by four inch strips for the back of that pouch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these pressed nicely, figure out which colors I'm gonna put where, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm going to stitch them down. So I went through my bag and I got all my little pieces out and I kind of looked and just they're, right now they're just laying down in a mess just to see how they'd kind of look against it. Some of them are a little bit close still, but I'm all right with that. I did go ahead and say, nope, that red was just because there's no extra patterning on it at all. So I decided that that red wouldn't work. And I had some of these fabrics, but I thought they're too much like tree trunks and stuff that I'd rather save them for a project like that. Plus, I didn't think that they were going to go all that well. I mean, they, it, it is a scrappy project, and push come to shove, if I had to use these, I could put them in. But I still have this bag with tons of scraps left in it to make many more projects. There is even fabric in there that's large enough for me to go ahead and use for the lining. Now, if you haven't worked with batiks or seen them too much, there is another really cool detail about them. They tend to be dyed in a way that it's not always like gradiated and it's not always two different colors like this. But as you can see, if I were cutting out pouches for this or if I was cutting out hexes or something, I could get a pink one and a purple one. I can line it up so that I get it half and half depending on what I'm making. So you can get a lot of variety out of one piece of batik. So if you can only get one piece, because batiks do cost more based on the dyeing process, and you wanna do a lot of projects with just that one piece of fabric, that one yard that you could pick up or half a yard, try to find one that has different variations and different colors going throughout it so that you can have a lot of variety but with only one piece of fabric. So I will cut this for the lining and I will still have plenty left over to make many, many more projects, as I said. This one I just thought was really pretty. I did want to put it on the outside, but the colors were just a little bit too light and it just wasn't going to work for what I wanted. I felt like I needed a darker color on the bottom, which is why I went with the more of the burgundy wine, however you want to color, call that color. That's why I went with this. So we're gonna be taking this to the sewing machine. I need to set aside my bottom pieces. I do not need these. These are cut a little bit wider than the, the three inches we discussed, but it's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna trim off the bottom with whatever's extra anyway. I didn't wanna mess with trimming it now and then trimming it again and everything like that. I just cut off the two pieces to fit the width and I cut off those little junction legs that were on it so that I could have it. This is the part that can get some of you that are a little bit of your OCD into trouble when we're going to play with our fabric placements. 
I just tried to make it so that it's a little bit pleasing to the eye. I mean, you could see that maybe you don't wanna have a blue and a purple together. Maybe you wanna put this down there. Now you can just sit there and move them around a lot, line them all up in gradations and color orders and whatnot. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take them over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew them however they come off of the pile. The way it worked out for me when I made the peppers is I just lined it up on the edge and I kind of just went to the line a little bit over. As long as you're not seeing white between your piece and the line like that, you just wanna make sure that that's not gonna be visible because we're gonna lay our fabric when we put our bottom piece on, we're gonna lay it like this. So it's right on that line. And we're gonna stitch our quarter inch and then when we fold it back, we wanna make sure that all of these are covered. That's why I had you have extra room up here so we're not cutting it as an exact measurement. It's easier to have it a little bit longer so you can move it down a bit. I tend to go a little bit over the line because I can still find the line when I'm sewing, when I go to put that piece on. Batiks, as I said, there is really not an exact right and wrong size. You can go either way. But if you're using just your standard quilting cotton, you wanna lay your next piece down right sides together and you're gonna line it up on the right hand side. Then we're gonna take this to our sewing machine and we're gonna stitch our quarter inch and we're just gonna go right along here and we're gonna to try to stop when we get to the line. You can go a little bit past, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. As long as you don't have a lot of this fabric hanging down, that will add extra bulk to your zipper pouch. And we are using darker colors, so you won't be able to see through it. A lot of times things like this doesn't really work with light colored fabrics and whites and stuff because you will have a lot of shadowing. Since our fabrics are a little bit longer, we're okay, a little bit past the line. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that to there. I'll show you what that looks like. I always get a lot of questions on needle positions and stitch length and stuff like that. So that's another thing I always tell you guys as we're doing these projects that my sewing machine, when I put it on to a quarter inch, it automatically goes to 2.0 stitch length. If your sews at a normally, whatever you do your quilts at your bag or your bags normally at. So if you do them at a 2.5 or a 3.0, go ahead with that setting. If you're not sure what you should put it at, I would go at a 2.5, just kind of halfway in the middle. That's a nice sturdy stitch. It's gonna hold everything neatly. We're not gonna have a lot of tugging like we would on a quilt seam, so it doesn't have to go down that low. I just don't wanna sit there and move the dial, so I just let it go automatically. I didn't do any back tacking anywhere at all because all these seams are gonna be crisscrossed over, so we don't have to worry about that. I just went ahead and started here. And then I did, I, my machine has an automatic cutter, so I just cut it off right there. If you're using some type of a batting that you cannot put your iron down, then you can just go ahead and finger press this. There is a way to work on this pouch without using an iron until you get all of your batting covered. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that today for anyone that's using some type of a poly blend. I just finger press it over, it's going to be fine. Then I'm gonna take my next piece, if I want to see, mm -hmm. well, this side has some, some darker pieces on it there, and I do like that. So I think I'm going to put that as my right side, and I will just lay that down right sides together. Stitch this down again at whatever stitch length you want. I'm going to go with the 2.0 still, and then bring it back, and we're going to finger press it. So I'm going to continue doing that all the way to the end, and I'll show you what this top looks like then. Now, as I was sewing this first pouch, you can see that I have a little bit of extra batting left over. This is after putting on seven of my strips. If I put my last one on, and when I fold it over, I'm gonna have some extra left over on the back, and this one's going to be a little bit skinnier than this one. And it's probably because when I was measuring the pouch that I made, the pepper pouch, that I had just measured the outside of the pouch and didn't account for seams. Who knows what numbers I started with and how much I trimmed it down. I don't remember, that was a couple weeks ago. So you can either sit there and make sure you do all the math and get all the numbers exact for the piece you're doing, or you can just go ahead and wing it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch this piece down anyways, even though it's gonna be a little bit narrower. And when I do my next side pouch, maybe I'll start my first piece just a little bit off the edge, or I'll work it in the opposite direction. It's a scrappy pouch, 
most people aren't going to sit there and measure each little strip. It should not be that visible to the eye. And when we go and trim this down to make it into our zipper pouch, we can always trim a little extra off here so that it balances here. This doesn't have to be our final measurement. We can start a little bit larger and trim it down. But I wanted you to know that as I was doing it, something measurement right wasn't right with the batting or with my strips, and this is how it's going to end up. I can cut back a little bit here. And I can make this strip a little narrower so it won't be as noticeable because this one is going to go into the seam allowance also. So I think that might be what I'll do is I might just decide to see where that's going to end up there. And then just line it up so that when I stitch it, it comes like that. And I think that'll look okay that way. It all looks different until you sew it into the pouch, and then once you sew it in, a lot of these little differences that you see here are going to get eaten up in the seam allowance, and you're not going to notice it. So I can trim this down with my scissors a little bit, or I can just move. I can just move my seam over a little bit like this, so that when I fold it, and then I'll just put my seam right here, and then I'll just trim this extra off, and then it'll all look fine. Watch, I'll show you. And there's our first panel done and I went ahead and stitched the second one and as you can see they both have a bit over the top that they're going to need to be trimmed not a problem I went ahead and gave mine a good press if you're working with a polyester or anything that's going to poly blend if you want to wait you can either just press at this half or you can wait until we put the next piece on and then give the whole thing a good pressing there if as you had finger pressed it over it didn't it get a little bit of a fold a little bit of a tuck in it or something so that maybe your piece has a little bit just like this or whatever going through here. When you press it, it's gonna flatten it out. So it's gonna go across. That little bit will go over the seam. You'll see what I mean if you run into that problem. I've had that problem before in string blocks, but when you give it a good press, it goes ahead and it covers it all up and flattens it out and it's going to be fine. We are doing just a random scrappy project. If you guys need to make sure everything is perfect, go ahead and do the math. But I'm just a freeform crafter. I just kind of like wing it and go with it. I'm sure you guys have figured that out by now. But I like to give you the way to do it if you just want to have fun like I do and just grab some scraps and have fun. And whatever it comes out, it comes out. Someone's going to love it. If this came out, if you're more of a, a perfectionist where you need to have everything lined up and they all have to measure the same, and that is fine. It is okay because that is how you were built. And your pouch comes out a little bit wonky then go ahead and give it to a niece or something or a granddaughter or donate it as a teacher's gift or into a raffle or something there's going to be someone that's going to love it the school bus driver someone will love whatever it is throw some candy in it and they're guaranteed to love it now if you're just kind of a wonky wacky freeform gal like me you can even sew your pieces on crooked so when you said instead of lining it up perfectly to stitch like this go ahead and make it a little wonky Maybe you wanna wonky the next one and you wanna just kinda of go back and forth or change it up as you're going, you can do that also. Now let's go ahead and get our piece on the bottom. If you did like I did and you have extra at the end, you wanna just make sure one part of it has a nice straight edge. This piece, as long as it's gonna go longer than our panel right here, if this piece is like this or jagged and stuff, it's fine. You just want a straight edge as best you can up here. Once again, if you're going wonky, you can lay this down so that when you're, when you're done, your pouch can be on a diagonal like this. You'd obviously just need more fabric, or you can just have it a little bit crooked, or you can do it straight like we're going to do. Now, our first and last piece is not stitched down all the way. We have our lines that we can see. What I like to do if I want to make it nice and even and everything's going to line up nicely, I just peek and I put that line that I drew right on a line on my mat. So that's nice and straight there because now I can't see the line anywhere in there. But if I take the straight edge of my fabric, let's see which side I want to use, right sides down, I can line it up on the line there and line it up on the line there and I know I've got it everywhere. You can pin it at a quarter inch mark. You can just kind of peek to make sure when you stitch it. I already know that I can't see any of the drawn line down here, so I know that it's all been covered already. You can add pins to it at this point if you'd like. 
I'm sure you kind of figure it out that I'm just going to go ahead and take it to the sewing machine like that and stitch it. I'm only going from here just a couple steps over there. And when you're making this, you might not even be five steps away from your sewing machine. You might be right next to it. So you could put some pins in to hold it or some clips. But my batiks are sticking to each other. The batting is there. Everything's been pressed. It's holding it together nicely. So I'm not going to go ahead and worry about that. Let's do that one more time. If you have... See how some of this is gone past the line? I can take my scissors and trim that, but it's such a small amount. It's less than a quarter inch, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna line it up on the lines again so that I can go ahead and line my fabrics up on that line on my mat. And you thought your mat was just for cutting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take it to my sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch that quarter inch. And after I do, if it has any of these extras, I can go ahead and trim that off if I can get my scissors in there. If I can't, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna fold it down and press it. It's not that much that it's gonna cause an issue when you make your pouch. I have been doing all of my stitching with a white thread up top and in my bobbin. I'm not going to be adding any extra quilting on this. You can add some quilting lines, some straight lines to the bottom if you'd like. This is just a small pouch that it's really not going to need it. The cotton batting I'm using, you know, you do it. Some of the cotton batting I've used in the past is every 10 inches. This one, I believe, is four or five inches, which basically is like the width of my hand. All of this has been quilted down. This is the only part that's unquilted. And if you remember, we're going to be trimming extra off of this one. So as you put your seam in and make it even more it's just going to be a few inches deep so it's not going to be worried about having that quilting if you like to have the lines and the look and stuff go for it i would just use once again it's up to you but i would use a, a kind of a matching or a neutral thread that's not going to really pop too much because we are using these fun colors and the reason i bring up thread is just i wanted to tell you that I have a lot of, since I use a lot of white thread, I have a lot of partial white bobbins. Now I don't want to put one in when I'm doing any type of a sewing of a, when I'm sewing blocks or I'm doing the whole bit of putting the bag together, but when I'm just doing all these little lines of quilting, I have to stop so many times and cut my thread and start over anyway, I decided to use up my little bits of bobbin thread. So I'm on my second or third bobbin just from sewing these little bits here. So that's a great way to use up your thread. We've talked about it before on Quilt As You Go. I just wanted to give you a little reminder for anyone who might be new here. Now my next step is to go ahead and get this trimmed up. I'm just gonna spin it over. And at this point, I'm going to square it up, and I'm gonna square it up based off of, so I can see my bobbin, my stitching line right there. So my, I'm gonna use that as my straight line and say that is going to be what I consider to be my straight line, even though it looks kinda, of this, the ink line is a little bit off, so I'm glad I did flip it over and use it on the other side because it's a little bit wonky on there, which makes it look like I'm doing something crazy. I'm going to go ahead and put it at the two and a half inch mark. I can scoot it down a little bit and do the two and five eighths. Remember, whatever we do to one bag, we are going to have to do the same thing to the other bag. So on this side, it looks like I'm going to do it at about three and a quarter inches. And I can line up down here at seven and three quarters. Because as I was stitching on the batting and stuff, it does shrink up. That's why you can start with a larger piece if you would like. If you know exactly what you're gonna be putting in the pouch and you need it to be the exact same size, I would start with a larger piece and then trim it down so that you don't have to worry about anything shifting and shrinking with your batting. That is one of the things that happen when you're using cotton batting. Not on the cutting mat. But based on the way that I stitch, trimming up is not an issue. I do it all the time. You can always put this one down to see. 
that you're going to be about the same. You can be a little bit off. It's not going to hurt it too much. You can always just change your seam allowance. When I did that last video on how to shorten a zipper, you guys remember all the different little issues I had with my pouches when I was trying to put them together. Doesn't that kind of remind you of a piano key border? I chose to do mine in different color orders. When you're looking at the front of the pouch, you're gonna see one color. And when you're looking at the back of the pouch, you're gonna see a different color. But if I just didn't want these two to be the same and to make it, if you happen to get an eyeball of the side or something, I didn't wanna have this piece to be like one huge piece versus two smaller pieces. Now, some people, when they're making pouches like this, they like to use, let's say we're using our one and a half inch all the way through here, but on the ends, they like to add in their seam allowance. So while these are one and a half, they might make this one and this one one and three quarters so that after the seam allowance is sewn in, they're all still gonna be the same size. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, but mostly for the pouches, I don't worry about it too much. Maybe if I'm doing those buckets and baskets and stuff, I do like it that way. This is a flat pouch. This isn't a tote bag. I think it's going to be okay. You're not gonna notice it as much. So now I'm gonna to have to figure out my lining. When I cut my lining, I just go ahead and take, I can leave it doubled. Then I would have two different pieces. I could fold it right sides together if my piece is big enough, or I can just cut individual pieces. Then I just lay my pouch down on it and I can either trace around it or just put my ruler straight down on it and cut out my lining. Well, I'll go ahead and cut out my lining, get everything stitched together, come back and show you what this pouch looks like when it's all finished. And here's my finished pouch. It ended up being about five by seven. I wasn't going for a certain measurement. I do like this as a nice little a makeup or a notions pouch or just some little things to want to put in there. You can put your headphones and your phone charger and things like that. Not everything needs to be a certain specific size. Kind of like just grab the pouch and find what's going to fit in it. As you can see, I do have some different widths just based on the way that I ended up sewing it together. So it did end up being a little bit different and not exactly measured, but it's okay. My colors are different on the side, like I said, that I like. I went with the zipper to kind of go with the bottom, but then I used a purple thread to stitch everything, mostly because my lining is purple at the top and pink down at the bottom. I just thought opening it up, it'd be nice to see that purple right there to go up against the purples and the burgundies at the top. So I hope that answered all the questions that you guys had for how to make these little quilt as you go scrappy pouches. I gave you lots of extra details and information just to help you out along the way. I think that was a bit of a fun challenge just to grab a bag of scraps or a handful of scraps to just pull some fabrics from your stash and just go ahead and make some little pouch out of it and make it all work together. I really enjoy making this style pouch. I like this quilt as you go, little bits of scrap and stuff like that. I like how it is soft for the batting versus using a stabilizer. I do enjoy that little bit of thin puff. I wouldn't use too big of a thick of a type of batting, but that cotton is nice and thin, so it works out really well. So thanks for hanging out with me again this week and working on another random as we go project. And don't forget, create with scraptitude, and I'll see you next time. Bye.